All right, we are here to start reading through the elements of statistical learning. So this is a very important textbook in data science. Um, it is one of these, one of the most commonly used textbooks for learning about data science um, and specifically for learning about the details um, behind many machine learning models and understanding how they work and why they work. Um, one thing that I will say about this is some of these models are a little bit older, like they've been developed in like past decades and they're sort of simpler in um, architecture. Although as we move on, we'll get to m much more recent models. Um, but this is still really important because these simpler models sort of form the foundation of our knowledge and oftentimes more complex models are built on simpler models. So you need to understand the simple models first before understanding the more complex models, or at least it helps with your understanding. Um, and also a really important point is that sometimes simple models are the best models for whatever problem you're working on. Um, and being able to understand which model is best to use for a particular problem and why, this is one of the skills that is really important for a data scientist to have. And in order to have this knowledge, you need to know about all of the different models that are out there. And so that's what we're going to do in reading this book. Um, so it is worth noting, this is written in a pretty, um, this is written for more of an advanced audience. Um, there is another textbook, um, I believe it's just Introduction to Statistical Learning by the same authors. And that um, is an easier read and they walk you through a lot of the calculations and a lot of the steps. Um, and I really like that textbook. Um, this one reads like a math textbook. There is a lot of calculations and a lot of um, work that you need to do on your own. A lot of times, especially more advanced math textbooks, they leave out a lot of the steps in their calculation and they sort of make you do it on your own. And there's a number of reasons that textbooks do this. Part of it is because it helps save on space in the textbooks. Um, part of it is because oftentimes um, like when you read te textbooks, authors will really emphasize that if you want to be really good at math, then you need, and if you want to really deeply understand the material, then you have to do the exercises. Um, and I've heard this from so many people that I believe it, but on the other hand, I think that there should be some resources to make some of these calculations a little more accessible to a wider audience so that maybe, so that so maybe you need to do all of these exercises and computations on your own if you want to really do research in this field, but there should be a way to understand it if you just want to learn about this field without necessarily wanting to be an active researcher. And so that's what I am trying to accomplish. I'm trying to make reading through this textbook a little easier by going through and finding places where there are a lot of details and trying to make those computations easier.